Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Rambling Grown Up Sports Podcast. I am your host, Robert Reels, ready to give you the sports news that you've been looking for. And of course, this week we always got a mostly I'll usually have a guest host. And once again, joining me this week, you might have heard his voice already. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Gonzalez is joining me today. Jeremy, tell the people what's up. What is going on, everybody? It feels good to be back. Decided that rambling once wasn't enough. I wanted to come ramble again. So here we are with Robert. About to ramble once more. Yes, your 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 main host, Robert Rios, here for you. <laughs> but uh, I mean, this time we're not on, we're not not the podium, but we're just gonna be rambling today just for fun. But yeah, I mean, it's only been a day or two. But how have you been? Been good. Um, got a little bit of a sh- uh, injured shoulder from playing soccer, so sometimes I forget that the beautiful game is sometimes a painful game, but. I'll be good. I'm on a week-to-week basis. I'll be back for the next one. No worries. We got a lot to talk about today, though. This is what I'm super excited. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, we got a mix of some new stuff, some stuff that we missed last week. Sorry about that, everybody. But yeah, I mean, we're going to be talking some some basketball. We're going to be talking some baseball. We're going to talk about some ultimate fighting, which we don't usually get to talk about here. Um, and, you know, we got... The rundown, which, you know, we got a lot of different stuff in there. So make sure you stick around. We're going to be giving our opinions, giving you the stats that you need to know. Because, hey, man, there used to be a show on a specific sports network that was called Num- Numbers Never Lie. Even though I've also quoted myself saying that the ball doesn't bounce your way sometimes. So, you know, it happens. But, uh, yeah, um, hopefully our-, our show runs smoothly today. Um I mean, just, I know I asked you, how have you been, but what you been up to, Jeremy? Just really been trying to keep up with everything that's been going on uh, in MLB, trying to keep up with everything that's been going on in just around the world. So much sports to keep up with. Sometimes it's kind of hard to balance it all, but it's been a lot to take in, a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand. I mean, like, say, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure if you follow us on the socials or even on the show, you notice that we kind of jump around from sport to sport. Well, cause like, you know, the, the format is fairly simple. I think, you know, we just try to give a very general overview on what's popular or what we are thinking or what we want to talk about. So, you know, I mean, you got to kind of dabble in a little of everything. I know I mean, it's a little bit easier on like social media because you could just put like a hashtag and be like, oh yeah, this this is it at the moment. This is hashtag whatever. But you know, with audio format, it's a little bit more difficult because like you have to stick to that one thing and then it's recorded. It's the past. It's what you already talked about. But yeah. But uh, I mean, for me, I guess uh, I don't know. I've just been working <laughs> and trying to organize the show but yeah this is mostly it here it's been fun man uh again i'm super excited to be on the show glad that i was able to double dip back-to-back episodes so let's get this thing going robert oh yeah let's start the rambling right let's do the damn thing but uh yeah uh the first thing that we got on our our list of topics and i already mentioned it before we're talking some basketball and no excuse me <coughs> i misspoke hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on wrong wrong order we're gonna be talking something that is very recent breaking news almost if you want to count it like that uh major league baseball has announced that they have canceled opening day and are looking to also cancel further games after that due to the fact that the MLB Players Association has declined uh, the league owner's final proposal for a new uh, bargaining deal. So, yeah, um, there's not going to be any baseball coming, what is it, like May, right? May, April, that's when the, when the season starts, usually? Yeah, you, usually opening day is uh, like first week of April. 
or like the very end of March, but it's oh, gonna yeah, get pushed I, back. Opening day for some teams is gonna be March 31st. Like for example, the Dodgers were gonna play that day. I think they're gonna play the Rockies. But uh yeah, um this past Tuesday of this week, uh Rob Manford spoke with the media and yeah, um for the first time in 27 years after you know many lockout talks you know the went all the way up to their deadline hour and couldn't come to a deal i guess that both sides could you know find was fair uh so what they officially is what i'm organizing looking at my notes here is uh uh manfred has canceled the first two series for each of the 30 teams cutting each club schedule from 162 to most likely 156. That's a total of 91 games that have now been erased. And yeah, uh, I mean, I can also tell you these guys worked into what, like 2 p.m. Pacific time? Is that is that what it was, Jeremy? Yeah, they went right to the last possible minute of that deadline. Could not come to an agreement. And uh, once it was understood that it wasn't going to happen right at the deadline that was when the announcement was made that there would be no games or the first two series would be canceled and opening day would be pushed back and if it continues in this direction where they can't come to an agreement there's going to be more games canceled and it's just going to be bad for everybody no yeah i mean oh, it's it's so annoying honestly like in my opinion like they they waited so long to get these meetings going. Uh, a reporter asked, like, why'd you guys wait so like a month after to the point where Manfred didn't even answer the guy's question. It's ridiculous, in my opinion. I think the way they're approaching uh, the whole situation, I think it's one big joke. If If Manfred and the MLB owners really did love the game and the team, and the sport, they would have worked on things a little bit quicker and it would have just, I feel like everything would have been a lot smoother. What I do like though, is that the players are standing their ground. They're not budging and they really want what they deserve. And what I think is also great is we live in an age of social media now where in the past, whenever something like this were to happen in sports, we wouldn't see what the players would think. We would only hear the representative from the Players Association speaking on for everybody, and that was it. Now we can see players taking to social media, to Twitter, to Instagram, expressing their thoughts, their frustrations, you know, all of that. So it's, it's really putting a unique perspective that we're able to see unlike anything in the past. Like, I remember scrolling through Twitter. I want to say it was... March 1st, which was yesterday. And so I remember seeing Anthony Rizzo, the uh, three-time All-Star first baseman. He tweeted saying, to the fans, we'll miss you the most. To the younger generation of baseball players, this is for you. You know, having to see things like that, you know, it obviously shows that that's what the players, like they're, they're working for something bigger to set up the next generation, the next incoming baseball players for you know, to be on a livable wage because some of the minimum payment that the minor league, minor league players were getting, I think was, it, it was barely minimum wage. If you divided all the hours of practice and games and all of that, it was barely anything. So it's clear that the players are fighting for something bigger here. And I remember seeing Marcus Stroman on Twitter saying that he wants the commissioner out. You know, there's players expressing frustrations in that front. So it's really interesting to kind of see everybody's perspective coming in. There's people currently standing outside the MLB's offices in New York calling him man fraud. <laughs> so uh, some fans are upset. Uh, Manfred also stated their, the deal they were trying to get the players to accept was something that would help fans and players alike and help elevate baseball or some BS. Like, what are you talking about? What, eh, 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 trying to almost make the players look bad. Like, oh, you're hurting the fans. Like, okay. 
Like, I still got to buy a ticket. I still got to buy food at your stadium. I still got to maybe buy merchandise at your stadium. What are you talking about, Willis? Like, Yeah, I don't think the owners realize that each game day that the players don't play is revenue lost for the whole team. Oh, no, well, yeah, I, like, no shit food. <laughs> yeah, that's why, you know, like. <laughs> That's that's money that could be going in their pockets, you know, to some to some extent, of course. But mm -hmm. they're they're gonna lose so much money. I think even bigger though, I think an even bigger loss. It's not so much the money; it's the interest in the sport. Like this whole lockout is gonna lose so many fans of baseball. Obviously, the diehard fans are likely gonna still come back to watch, you know. But for like the casual fans, I think this is something that might stray them away to go to other sports and maybe never watch baseball at least not for the foreseeable future which could be another big loss in you know financially for the league and for the teams uh, i found another quote uh on an espn article it's literally the headline itself they need to stop treating us like we're idiots said one veteran player we don't know who that is but Hey, he said it straight up. So I don't know, cause uh, just to like kind of like retell like what the players are asking for. They're asking for a bigger pool of money over X amount of years in relation to a rookie, not a star player, but like a rookie player coming into the league, getting paid X amount of money, and then after well, like seven, 10 years or whatever their contract length is, if they haven't developed or, you know, they're a consistent player, but they're getting older, uh, the players feel that older player who was a rookie uh, is no longer getting compensated uh, for a, a good value of money. And what I mean by that is basically they don't want to pay good, they don't want to pay older players more money and the league is still just trying to pay rookies less money. Does that make any sense, Jeremy? Does that is that like a good example? That, that was great. That made perfect sense. So the so the league did offer multiple different versions of this like final contract, but the the players kept asking for more. Well, and they, they never even met their goal. So according to Jeff Passan from ESPN, who's been doing a good job on covering. Uh, what's been going on uh the best and final offer the league made uh was no changes to the cbt threshold of i don't know what 22 220 220 224 230 i don't know this is all numbers but uh the more important part uh a five million dollar increase on the pre arb bonus pull for 25 million to 30 million and an increase of Minimums from 675K to 700K, moving up to 10,000K a year. I think that's what it reads. 10K slash a year. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And, and the previous one was the CBT thresholds at 238, 244, 250, 256, 263. The bonus pool, a pre bonus pool at 85 million with 5 million annual increase and minimums at two, 225K going to 20K a year. So I feel like they were, they were moving a lot of stuff around for them, but it was never going to be what they asked for. So. Yeah, there was, there was some progress. It's not to say that it was a total stalemate, but with their quote unquote last best offer, uh, right away the Players Association said no. Uh, I have a quote here from uh, Ross Stripling. He was a former Dodger and he is currently playing with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, he said, quote, it was an easy no, man, because we felt we were giving them a fair offer and they just didn't budge on this whole situation. Since December, they've hardly just budged at all. So obviously, Whatever they had offered was maybe to some extent a little bit ahead of what 
their negotiations were a couple months ago, but it still did not meet the expectations of the players association. And rightfully so, because I, I, I stand with the players. I don't think that what they're asking for is extremely, you know, out of the ballpark, <laughs> a little bit of a, a pun there, but I, I still think that uh, it's, it's not over the top impossible and it's very doable actually. So I think if I had to be quite honest, I'm expecting us to maybe get another, I want to say maybe another three weeks of baseball canceled. So I think we, we could possibly be looking at opening day probably by maybe the start of May instead of April, you know, so we might lose out on a month of baseball. It would be rough because I was really looking forward to opening day. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm siding with anybody because I don't know any of these. I, I don't know. the I don't know the owners. I don't know the players. They make a lot of money that, or they make more money than me. But I mean, if you guys have a gripe and you feel you are getting gypped then all right, yeah, go for it. Like, you know, stand up for yourselves. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is kind of hard to side with the league when your commissioner has verbally and multiple times kind of looked down upon the league and the players, whether it be calling the World Series trophy a, a piece of tin or a piece of metal or not answering the reporters' questions like, why didn't you guys meet before? Like, I mean, was he trying to save their ass or trying to cover up for the players and not make them look bad like i wish it could have been a little bit more transparent with you know like what how the situation is right now um i know i saw some players were asking like well if you guys lost money during the pandemic like show us and we'll back down i guess like like it's not that hard <laughs> but you know it is what it is we, we are where we are now um yeah there's no baseball right now and i know yeah i mean there's no pastime what are we gonna how are we gonna pass the time now jeremy what are we yeah, gonna do there is no Amer we just jumped to another sport i mean that's the only thing we can do unfortunately because i mean i get it baseball is one of the it's quote-unquote america's pastime you know it's not to say that it's the end of the world because there are other sports that can keep us entertained in the meantime but it's a pretty big loss, you know, especially for baseball fans who are diehard fans. If you're a casual fan, like I said, maybe you lose interest. You just jump to another sport. That's no problem. But for some of the diehard fans who are looking forward to this season, you know, uh, it's it it's rough to see that there's a lockout, you know. And, you know, me, I maybe I don't speak for all the diehard fans, but this is – these are games that we're losing, you know, to see star players in their primes. Like this is a year, if this lockout continues longer, that means we're missing out on a full season of Mookie Betts, of Shohei Otani, of Bryce Harper, of Marcus Stroman, you know, of, of all the, of Mike Trout, you know, all of the big MLB players, like we're losing out on seeing them play. And it, as fans, like we know, we don't have a, a very long time to see those superstars play. So it's kind of rough, you know, it's, it's rough to see. I wish the MLB was transparent. You know, I know Evan Longoria on Twitter, he was saying, you know, that if the clubs claim that the last five years have been so tough, then he wanted to see all the financials, you know, be transparent, show them and let that tell the story, you know, don't just say it, you know, he was crying for them to put everything out public document back, back up what it is they're saying let that speak for itself. So it's just rough. Like I said, I know it sounds like a broken record at this point, but for, for baseball fans, this is, this is a dark time that we're going through right now. I mean, what's like most other recent lockout we had, it was the MLS lockout. Well, that was like a month or two. Um, I know the NFL had a lockout, I think right before the 2011 season. If I'm not. Yeah. It was around that time. And then we also had the NBA lockout. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not to say that sports lockouts are rare. You know, it did happen from time to time. But I think this is going to be one of the bigger ones that we've seen because it's affecting – I mean, this is this is going to set the tone for such a long time. So but those wanna... lockouts weren't stupid. They, I mean, the NFL ones – like, the NFL lockout was kind of dumb. That's one because, like, it was money and they were trying to do a schedule. Like – this is ridiculous. It's, it's baseball, bro. Like, it's not that hard. Like, 
I mean, I'm not saying the sport is hard, but it's like you guys are supposed to be like a high end organization, and you're telling me that you guys can't give up some cash. Like it, it that's, doesn't. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, make it make sense. Like I got Bryce Harper on on a uh, Instagram posting a video. Oh, not video. The, what, what was the Instagram? A, you, is it the, the Tokyo one? Yeah, he's yeah. Like, is that the, going yeah. through Japan? Yeah, he's so that's yeah, that's another thing. So we got Bryce Harper posting a photo. I think it's a photo of himself in yeah, a jersey, a, an ed- a edited photo of him wearing, I think, a, a Tokyo Giants jersey. Which I think he's joking around. But if he really just wants to, if he just loves baseball and he just wants to go play baseball, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, his contract is null and void at the moment, so <laughs> he can go play somewhere else. He could. And could other players follow? Could we see other players, you know, go to go back to maybe the Dominican Republic or maybe we see them go overseas? When does the the Korean League start? I don't know off the top of my head. I'm good. I guess we're going to have to start watching baseball games at two in the morning again. 2 a.m. Like during the pandemic. I'm all for it. Dude, That was hilarious. Did you ever watch any of those games? I did not. I did. I saw some of them. Cause it was just it was just the Monday night baseball crew or Wednesday night baseball crew covering Korean baseball. Korean baseball. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to watch that. Yeah, hey man. Well, for us it was two in the morning, two three in the morning. But over there in the East Coast, it was like three a.m. No, six in the morning. So basically, all those people had got to wake up to watch baseball. <laughs> that's that's pretty nice. I mean, we would also wake up, but it would just be like a mid slumber. We would no, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah, up. I was just awake. It was the pandemic. Like, what was I gonna do? <laughs> I had no nothing. place to go anyway. Yeah, so. nothing. Yeah, no, no work to go to. No, I, nothing. I, I just so. turned my cable on. I was like, "Oh, they're showing Co- the Korean league." Oh, how nice! <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, there have been players. I'm trying to find it. I just saw it where the players were like asking, like, "Where? What is going on with like with the league?" Because like there are a few players who had who are voicing their opinions. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is, so. I mean, of course they're going to be mad. Like, they just want to play baseball. I mean, what have you been seeing from other players' responses? Well, it's been mixed. You know, uh, I've seen some... uh, I've seen some just directly call out the ownership or just the league itself. You know, just like I said with Marcus Stroman, you know, he said Manfred out. So that's one. I've seen uh, Kevin Pillar, former uh, CCUDH Toro. Hey, I know uh, him. Our alumni, yeah. Uh, He was saying that, you know, he wished the MLB would use some of their PR tactics to promote the stars in their game. There's also been Alex Wood, who used to play for the Dodgers and Giants. He said that um, it's not a coincidence that – you know, the MLB has pumped to the media that there was momentum going towards a deal. And then at the last second, they said that the player's tone changed. You know, he <laughs> just said that it's just they, they just want a fair deal and they want to play ball. You know, that's essentially it. So there's been yeah, there's that's what I'm saying. Like we're in this age of social media, we're, in, we're able to see a lot of different players voice their perspectives and opinions. And it's what's making this a lot more intriguing. Is it intriguing or is it stupid? I think the player's aspect is intriguing. I think the league side is stupid. Yeah, I, I think- don't know, man. I, I think my theory is it, it kind of goes back to all the big markets and the small markets. Like you got Dodgers, Yankees, and then you got Pirates and Athletics. Like... I remember right before the the season ended, there was like a big talk on like if they should raise this not the salary cap, it was something else, but they were talking about like moving money around. But if they do move that money or that that cap, it's gonna somewhat hurt the smaller teams just due to the fact that they don't get a lot of people going to their games and their day games. 
So like they're trying to avoid that struggle. Like if you're like the pirates, like what do you want us to do? Like, like if you're a pirates fan and you can't go, like what are you gonna do? Like, all right, I can't go. Or you know, if you're the team, it's like okay, we'll make a better product. You know, get the right people in charge. Exactly. Yeah. Try to turn your franchise around instead of being okay with average or mediocre. Because then, like, at that point, you're kind of asking for the other teams to, like, help you out. Like, it's not like I want – it's not like the MLS where, like, it's – you're not owning a franchise. You're buying a piece of the league. Like it's a little bit different with baseball and like other major sports in the U.S. Because like you're you're making a franchise. Like this is your team, you own it. You could do whatever you want. So it's like okay, like fix it, you know. But I mean, it's just my theory. It's just an idea. It's not not fact. Don't quote me on it necessarily. But yeah, I mean that's that's the situation where we're at now overall. Do you think? These you think some of these players are gonna go overseas? I think if the lockout continues and it, it like I said, it goes in the direction where we might be missing the first month, maybe first two months of baseball. I think we might see. Uh, I think a couple players take matters into their own hands and go find some way to to play ball in the meantime. You're gonna go see Shohei Otani go back to. Wait, he's from Japan, right? Yes, I believe he is. He's gonna go back there and. Hit bangers again. I'd be all for it. I'd tune in. I'd definitely tune in. <laughs> Dude, that'd be hilarious if, like, the MLB never still has a contract with, like, those leagues over there in Asia. And <laughs> they have to air those games with their own, their former players, bruh. Can you imagine how much of a slap in the face that would be? That'd be the ultimate troll from the players. That would be a troll. But, uh, yeah, I mean, is there anything else you'd like to add in regards to uh, the MLB lockout? It needs to stop. That's it. <laughs> I just want to be. stop. You're I just, <laughs> I just, I just want to go to Dodger Stadium. I just want to be sitting in the field level with my michelada, a Dodger dog, and I want to watch Clayton Kershaw. You don't even he... have money for field level tickets. Shut the hell hey, up. Hey, you don't know that. Yes, I do. Okay, first of all, if I wanted to, I could go. Okay, I prefer top deck because the views You buy the $10 uh, tickets all the way at the, the nosebleed top $10 tickets. Excuse me, there are no $10 seats anywhere for Dodgers. There yes, at there least is. 30 bucks to sit. Nah, it's like 10 bucks. A top no, deck. 10 bucks a game. Top deck view it does not even compete with anything else it is such a beautiful view you get the whole stadium there it's fantastic judge me whatever i just want to be in the stadium with my dodger dog my michelada enjoying a nice good old game of dodgers baseball that's it that's all i want that's all the fans want i know i'm not the only fan who wants that there's even afford a michelada hey honestly they are pretty pricey but it's worth it it's worth half a paycheck i don't care (laughs) <laughs> facts but uh yeah i mean hopefully they do resolve this but it is sure what it so. is sure hope so so you ready to move on let's go let's ramble about uh something else what's what's next in the books hey man chill <laughs> we're rambling about some uh some nba news once again uh i know this was what like a week ago and we missed it because we have an episode last week but we're gonna be talking some General NBA news and a little build All Star game or All Star weekend, I should say, which was kind of a dud, from my bit. opinion. Yeah, a just bit. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we had the slam dunk competition. Jeremy, were you able to catch that? I I was able to catch it, and I was extremely disappointed. Yeah, I know. I saw the highlights, and or I saw the dunks, and I saw the social media reviews, and uh, I, I think they would get a. Minus five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That I would probably guess that they would. I saw the entire dunk contest from start to finish. I saw the three point contest. And I saw the dunk contest, and I thought the three point shooting contest was way more interesting than the dunk contest. It was who, who won the three point contest? Um, 
I'm testing it. I believe that was wow, I'm blinking. Right. Of course I'd blink on the show. Uh I can't even remember, honestly. Who was it? I don't know. I mean, we could just look it up. We have the internet. <laughs> I know. We live in this 21st century. We have this oh, thing called the internet. Me. Like you didn't. I like how we. Tried I can't. To it wasn't. So it, it wasn't was Carl Young. Anthony Towns. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He so won Trey the, Young couldn't. The beat Mountain him. Dew three point competition. First big man to win it uh, in over a decade. I mean, Carl. I mean, what was Carl? Carl. What's his Carl name? Anthony Cat. Towns. Cat. Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns. <clears throat> Correct. Cat. Hey, he can shoot. He's a good shooter. I wouldn't say he's just like a. He's not your old school type of like. Big. Yeah. So oh I no, know. he he has range. He definitely know, has range. I don't know what you're talking about, Willis. So what do you check. mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What I mean? Yeah. What do you mean that I mean that you mean? He could win. Oh, wait, wait. What are, you, what are you talking about? I said that, yeah, he deserved it. Like, he's a good shooting big. Yeah. And then I say he's not your traditional big. And, yeah, he could shoot from anywhere on the court. And I agreed with that. So he's what just are you trying tall. to argue? No, because you were like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm like agreeing with you, Fu. I don't know what the hell you're talking no, about. Yeah, you're saying, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, this I don't know what you're as talking if about. I said something. You said, like, you were, it sounded like you said, like, you were surprised that he won. No, I'm not surprised at all. He's a good shooting big, and the way he was shooting the ball in that three-point contest, he absolutely deserved it. I think his winning score, I want to say it was 28 threes, mm -hmm. 28 or 29, something like that. But it was it was a pretty high number, so yeah, my, my man deserved it. Shout out to Cap. If you're listening, we love you. Well, I mean, I, I don't know about love, but I appreciate <laughs> your playing. Yeah, we respect uh, you as a player. Facts. In in the stump dunk competition, which was not very popular, uh, the New York Knicks forward Obi Toppin? Toppin? Toppin. Obi Toppin. Oh, what's going on? I think we're losing connection, sir. Hello, uh, hello. Can you hear me? Are we good? You're sounding like Megatron. Megatron. You're sounding like Megatron. You're sounding like Megatron. But any, anyways, all right, we got you. Um, he won the slam dunk competition. Uh, yeah, it wasn't very popular. Who else was in it? Um, is it Toscano. He was. Oh, hello, hello. Team he plays for. Yeah, you're bugging out, bro. Yeah, you're bugging out. You're bugging out. You're bugging out like the slam dunk competition. What about what about now? We, we back. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we love it when we record like this. It's wonderful. Love but it. uh, uh, we had Toscano Anderson. From the, he received a, a thirty nine on his the first dunk in the third round. Right from the Warriors. And you sound like Megatron again. And you sound like Megatron. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We're trying to work our connection issues here. We love the internet. But uh, yeah, um, that's so weird. You get 39 in your first dunk and you still lose. <laughs> that's not a very high but score for a for first dunk. Apparently, Toppin scored a 45 in the third round after struggling to, to complete. <clears throat> he was struggling to complete an in between the legs on two attempts. He threw the ball off the backboard and slammed home and in between the legs dunk. Oh, good job. Uh, they both received a score of 44 in the first round. Uh, Toscano Anderson jumped over his teammate, Andrew Wiggins, before. And where'd it go? Where my notes go? Why is everything refreshing? What is going on? The internet is starting to hate us now. Oh, there we go. Uh, he what? Oh, here we go. He jumped over his teammate, Andrew Wiggins, before throwing down a one-handed windmill on his Third dunk attempt, Toppin jumped over someone before swirling the ball around his back for a left-handed dunk. None of those make any sense, but this dunk contest still sucked. <laughs> a lot of it, yeah. A lot of it, a lot of the dunks, no one got him on the first try. Yeah. They got him on the second or third. That's what Ooh. made it pretty disappointing. I'm and trying then, to find I'm trying to find the guy that tried dunking with the NFT around his neck. That was stupid. Oh, yeah. I've, I mean, it was even more yeah. stupider. When he didn't even make it, what, what an idiot. I just think the dunk contest now, a lot of people try to use antics or they try to tell a story with the dunk instead of like actually just attempting to complete the dunk. Yeah. You know, they want to they go so over the top. They're all trying to be uh, Blake Griffin jumping over the car. Yeah. You know, they're trying to be uh, Aaron Gordon uh, fully seated above the mascot. You know, it's, dude, that was dope. Yeah, that's oh, a dunk. That was a good yeah. creative dunk. That's that how you, was that's how you bring creativity to the slam dunk competition. Yeah, that's how you bring a fresh intro. And all he did this. was he had the mascot. It wasn't like no one famous or nothing. It was his team mascot. Honestly, at that slam slam dunk contest, 
Nothing would beat be, that 2016 slam dunk test. Nah, nothing in the future. I Who think was so. it? It was Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon. And it, cause Aaron, it was Aaron Gordon that jumped over the mascot, right? Yes. Yeah, that was. I thought Aaron Gordon got robbed. And he I, feel, won. I feel like it was a good combination because I remember Zach Levine was doing a lot of traditional dunks, but they were like, but they were powerful. Like, they were, yeah. Like, he did a windmill from the free throw line. That is, yeah. You have to have like, insane hops for that. Like, he was doing traditional dunks, but he was doing them as clean as possible. If he would have done any of those dunks, but made it look like not a dunk, he would never have scored high. Like, they were clean and they were powerful. That's what you're looking for if you're going to do, like, because everything's been done, right? Like, how else are you going to? make something new which there weren't i wouldn't say anything he did that time was new it's just that he made them look easy and he made them look as clean as possible and i feel like none of these foods were really trying to do any of that and the foods that were trying to do it they couldn't do it because in this contest by the way was a uh, cole anthony from the magic juan toscano anderson from the golden state warriors obi Thompson from new york and Jalen green from the houston rockets there's a lot of potential within those superstars but uh, none of them lived up to expectations none of them no yeah and then i think there was even a, a video someone said uh is it kareem abdul jabbar oh he walked out yeah mid, mid contest <laughs> that was hilarious they're like even the old heads are leaving <laughs> that's messed up i know it was not a good a good dunk contest no yeah it was, a, it, was it was mid actually it was lower than mid yeah, below mid. I think you have a problem when you have a Knicks player winning the Sam Dunk competition. Nah, Obi Toppin is good. Don't don't trash him. He's entertaining. He's from the Knicks. That is true. The Knicks are pretty dude. They're they got capped on in a Disney movie. <laughs> they yeah, that is true. You know what I'm that, talking about? You know what I'm talking about? To, uh, it's from the movie Soul. One of the characters is like, yeah, I've been messing with, I've been messing up this team for years. And when it's some random Knicks player trying to dunk, and then just for no reason, in midair falls down and misses the dunk. And oh, the Knicks are going to, uh, and the Knicks lose again. <laughs> hey, no, it's bad. When Disney's clowning on you, that's, that's, that's pretty bad. You're pretty low. Dude, when I was watching the movie, I died when I saw that. I was like, bruh, I, was like, I can't believe they just did that. I can't. I still got to see that movie, Soul. I haven't seen it yet. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. But uh, movie, I mean, not to get sidetracked, but uh, also in this NBA All-Star Weekend, there was a celebrity game. I don't know who won. I just would like to point out that MGK should be going nowhere near a basketball court ever. <laughs> can't shoot, can't rebound, and he tried to tomahawk someone's arm off for no reason. Yeah, I saw the highlights of him during the Celebrity All-Star Game, and they were pretty bad. They looked like – the high, those highlights looked like the LA Fit pickup games, you know, you'd see. So <laughs> pretty bad. Not the best. Yeah, I think even the LA Fit uh, people at the gym could do a better job. Remember how Honestly, to, yeah. like, when we had Migos and, like oh, – I was, mean Quavo? Oh, whatever. We had Quavo, and we had uh, – a. Oh, I'm trying well, to hold up. We had Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett was playing unbelievable, man. He was he's a freak of nature. He is I saw even un- Justin Bieber knows how to play a little bit. Whatever happened to that fool? Uh good question. That is I saw Mr. Question. Beast one time play and he was rebounding. He's a tall dude. He's a have you seen the YouTuber Mr. Beast? He's big. I don't think so. But yeah, dude, like it's like I don't know. It, it was interesting. I, I think this year's All Star Game could have been. I mean, the ending though for the actual All Star Game was good. Uh, you had Team LeBron versus Team Durant. Uh, Team LeBron was victorious with a score of one hundred sixty three to one hundred sixty. Uh, LeBron gained the game winning shot that was in nice. the fourth quarter. That was nice. Yeah, in was Cleveland. Nice. In in Cleveland. So How come he can't do that for the Lakers? I don't know why. He is all right. It's not to oh, disrespect not. LeBron. What maybe he's mean? not hit. Maybe he's not hitting a game winning shot, but he's playing pretty. He can't fantastic. even hit. He can't even hit a game winning shot in a real game. Are you talking about that game? Was it against the I'm Mavericks just, that you're talking about? All the about? games. All he's not. He's not. He. You're not that guy, pal. 
He's averaging 28.9 points a night, man. What more do you want from him? He needs but he's support. not hitting he's not hitting the, the shots that matter though. He's not supposed to be that guy. You're supposed to build a team of shooters around him, which the Lakers did not do, which is why they're failing so badly this season. I mean, I'm glad we're getting to this point because we're going to talk about uh, the second half of the season really quick, in which I guess we'll we'll jump to the Lakers portion because it was my fault. But anyways, yeah, the Lakers have just been struggling. Uh, they're currently, I believe, ninth in the standings, under 500. And this team, it didn't make no sense. Can't trade, can't trade Russ, who's gone cold, cold as ass. And yeah, like you said, no shooters. LeBron going to have to try to carry this team. We're no longer in the age of where each team has at least one star player. We're in the, the era of where you better have a super team or you're going to fall way behind. Better, yeah, you got to have at least two superstars, at least, to be even remotely I was going to say at least three. Yeah, all the big teams, I would say. At have least like, three and a supporting player coming off the bench. You have like, yeah, you have to have like two A-list superstars and then like maybe one B or two Bs. And then you're you're pretty good contention. And it, it doesn't help that the Lakers have lost uh, Anthony Davis multiple times this season. And he's gone down again. again. Made of glass, I guess. Again, yeah. Made of glass. Yep. I don't even say made I don't want to say paper. made of paper. I don't even want to say that. I just I don't, I'm not trying to be mean. I mean that's why I've seen on the social made of glass, made of paper. It's just like bro, it's like what's going on? Like you, you guys, you guys had everything going for you. You signed the right pay- players. You, you know, you signed uh, Carmelo Anthony to come off the bench. He was a perfect signing for the Trailblazers coming off the bench. What was it? A sixth man of the year candidate. Like, he was he was that for the Lakers earlier this year, but he's cooled off a little bit. Like it just doesn't make any sense what's going on with this team. They got to really evaluate themselves, man. Like it's, it's a lot of Laker fans are, are they're struggling watching the games. I give props to the Laker fans who watch every game because saw, it's it's rough right now. I saw a SpongeBob. I, I saw a random Lakers account and they put a picture of SpongeBob walking into his house naked, crying. And they edited a Laker hat on top of him. <laughs> like, I guess that's the, how bad it's gotten. But yeah, like, it's still... Okay, we just barely started games again. So if they don't turn it around right now at this moment, they're done. Yeah, they're done. If, if they continue in this downward trajectory, they won't even make the play-in tournament, which would be embarrassing with for a team that has LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And a Westbrook who's also on a downward slope, but even then, it would be super frustrating. Oh yeah, it's just it's hard to watch. But uh, also in the West, the uh, Phoenix Suns, uh, you know, they've I think they've left everybody behind. <laughs> I don't think no one's going to catch up anytime soon. Oh yeah, they are in the people. Uh, Devin Booker and that other guy, Chris Paul. That's right, I said that other guy because I feel like some people forget he's even on the team, like yeah. myself. Chris Paul was – he was having an MVP season, but uh, he just fractured his thumb, and he's probably going to miss five to seven weeks, which is probably going to kill his MVP case. But he was playing lights out before his injury. Yeah. Um, currently, the Suns are 49 and 12 as of this recording. Uh, second right behind them in – actually, in second and third, the closest teams are the Warriors was 43 and 19, and the Grizzlies are 43 and 20. Uh and they're even beating the Eastern Conference leader, the Miami Heat, by eight games because the Heat are 41 and 21. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I do, even looking at the records, it's, it's a very wide gap. Their win percentages are, their, the, the Suns' winning percentage is 0.83. It's ridiculous. Like, they're a, a very, like, I've been saying this the past two years, like, they're in the bubble, they were the best team not to make the playoffs. They would have made the playoffs going undefeated in the bubble if I think it was the Grizzlies. If the Grizzlies would have lost, they would have been in. And they probably would have so. yeah, they had the hot hand. And look, they've been a very consistent team the past two seasons. So yeah, I don't think no one's gonna be catch up to the West. I don't even think any team in the East could compete with this team. I uh, think this is my pick right now to win the finals. Really? Win the, yes. Are you kidding me? That's that's a fair choice. That's Are a fair kid- choice. Yeah, it's a fair choice. Really? Come on, bro. Don't come at me with that. 
I'm I'm I don't know about I think Embiid and James Harden have might have something to say about that later down the line. I think maybe even Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have something to say about that down the line. But I think from the West, for sure, there that's Phoenix is cementing that number one seed. You're wild, bro. But anyways, <laughs> uh who will who will have won the next the Nets Sixers trade? Who do you think? I'm being quite honest. I kind of think I think Brooklyn won the trade. I think they got a really good shooter. I think people forget that. Uh, I mean, number one, Ben Simmons is a fantastic defensive player. He's he can help out so much on that aspect when it comes to when it comes to the Nets, especially because they needed help. I mean, it, uh, offense is no problem with them when you have Durant and Kyrie Irving on the same back in the same court. But um, getting that defensive help from Simmons is going to be huge. On top of that, you got a very great shooter in Seth Curry. I think a lot of people forget about how good of a player he can be. And when he heats up, he really heats up. So I think he's big. And then they get all the drama of Harden just out of the team. So I think for me, Brooklyn wins the trade. But Harden is doing really well for himself in Philly. So it, it's good to see him ball. Get a great, again. great opening uh like a great opening game with them so i mean we'll have to see because yeah i know simon i don't want to say he was developing still but he was he's still young so he's got a lot of time to still develop his game you know so it'll be good <laughs> i think it'll be fun to see the east though yeah uh moving on uh who will win mvp uh, Philadelphia's Joel, Joel Embiid is leading the running as of right now. He's averaging a, a total of 29.6 points per game and 11.2 rebounds per game uh, as of the break. As of the break, these are numbers were recorded. But I'm pretty sure he's still averaging those. Uh, reigning MVP, Nikolo, Nikola Jokic. 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 He is sitting second uh, with the odd makers. Uh Followed by two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. I can say that. I don't know why. Uh, and then you got Steph Curry, John Morant, uh, Damar DeRozan, Devin Booker, and Luka Doncic. So from that list of players, uh, who do you think is in the running to win MVP right now? I, I'm going to go ahead and say Jokic is going to win the MVP. I think the way he plays... He's extremely efficient when he shoots. I think that's the biggest thing. And then on top of that, this man's vision on the court is unbelievable. He's he's. I mean, I think right now he's averaging like eight assists a game on top of 25 points and almost 14 rebounds a game. I think that is insane numbers to put up as, as a center, as a big man. So I think the advantage goes to him. I think Jokic in the end, it's going to be close. Uh, Giannis and Embiid are going to make it really, really tough, especially with the way they both have been playing lately. But I'm going to go ahead and give it to Jokic. All right. Um, I think I'll have to just give it to Embiid. Like, he's the... What? You... What? What? Do you not read the numbers I just read you? No, yeah. yeah I'm, I, like I said, I'm saying Embiid is going to make it close. I, I didn't say that he, he's not a terrible candidate. But why'd you give me that face? Because of your pick. Oh, uh, whatever. But anyways, uh, that's, I don't know. That's I don't know what to tell you. I, you, want, you want me to tell you Giannis is going to win? Like, okay. Like, three-time MVP. There. You happy? Gosh. Now nah, I select my pick, so. I'm going with the Embiid. But uh, is there anything else uh, that we should be looking forward to uh, within the second half of NBA yeah, games? Yeah, how about on? we take a look at the Grizzlies and John Morant for a quick second. Oh, this yeah. Man is putting up – it's – I swear to you, I cannot believe how electrifying one player can be. It really reminds me of, like, Kobe when he used to just put people on posters, when he would just take over games. It's like – I'm not trying to make a comparison between the two because I, I don't think it's fair, but I, I, this is the feeling that I get when I watch Morant play, you know, he's just, he, he's such a big player. He's a very efficient player on offense and it's super fun to see this man can shoot. This man is not afraid 
to take it in, dunk on anybody. Like it, he's all over the place. It's it's fun, so fun to see. I think outside of uh, the Lakers, and the Lakers are hard to watch right now. So being able to see Jaw play is is extremely entertaining. I mean, yeah, I'm glad to see uh, the Grizzlies. Uh, you know, found a, a starring man. Uh, I think gone are the days of what was his name, Debo. You know what I'm talking about? You had a there was Zach Randolph. You had that, Marcus that's Saul. What, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Zach Randolph. What he had like a nickname or something. Oh, I forgot what it was though. It wasn't Debo. That's for sure. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. All right, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, Marcus Saul. Those were good teams, and they kind of just disappeared for a bit. But yeah, Ja Morant. That's how you say it. Ja, Ja Morant. I was telling everybody Jay Morant. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Jay Morant. He's a. I saw he. I think it was two, a day or two ago. He destroyed some guy. Poor guy. On the poster. Yeah. On yeah. The poster. He Unbelievable. Do, he didn't have to do that to him. He Ended his life. That. His career. He retired after the game. It Stupid. No, he didn't retire. No, you didn't hear that from here. He, he's joking. But yeah, it was pretty. Pretty sick ass dunk, and boy, he had like fifty points in that game. He did. He dropped the fifty piece that game, and that same game, he, I think he had like must have been point seven seconds to close out the third quarter, and he managed to get oh. a shot off, falling away in it the was, corner. No, you forget it was a long throw to the corner, like a full like, court pass. A, a, yeah, an inbound pass, catch and shoot. Falling yeah. away in the Falling corner, away. yeah, it was. Uh, he's unbelievable. If you guys have not had a chance to go see it, like a game on TV, go check him out. He is so fun to watch. Yeah, fingers crossed. He's not flashing the pan, honestly. I would hope not, but we'll see. Him, he's fun. I mean, Luca, Luca Doncic is fun to watch too. Yeah, same. Can't can't ever get bored of him. He's they're both up. They're I'm the the future of the league is in good hands. That's what I'm really happy about. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, um, if that's everything, uh, we're gonna move on, right? We're gonna go into one of our my our favorite segments of the show, uh, the warm up. Cause we got warm up for the rundown. Uh, and for this week's warm up, uh, we're gonna be looking at uh this weekend's UFC card. We don't always get to talk about UFC, but I was looking up. I'm like, man, what's going on? And apparently, there's this fight between this guy named. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Colby Cummington? Yes, that is correct. And then, all right, I'm one for one. And is it George or Jorge? Jorge. Jorge Mazda. Mazda. Damn it! I said it earlier. Masvidal. There you go. Maz Masvidal. Yeah, that's correct. And yeah, um, they're gonna be fighting this weekend, uh, Saturday, March fifth, uh, seven p.m. Uh. Pacific time, I believe. Uh, and I know we don't usually talk about UFC, and I'll explain that real quick. And this is why I put this as the warm up because one, it's happening. And two, uh, the reason why I just want to talk because we don't, I didn't grow up watching a lot of UFC. Uh, for one, is pay per view. And two, I didn't have a lot of people around me <laughs> that liked watching UFC. So the closest thing that I got to watch as a kid with, for UFC was like, watching Brock Lesnar when he was still uh, fighting in the UFC, which at the time was a big deal because he came from WWE and he was a big dude and he liked socking people in the face. And he was the world heavyweight champion at, at, at some time, right? Am I tripping or not? I believe he was. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like my only connection to UFC. Uh, up until, what was it, like 2011, 2012, they started showing fights on like Channel 11 on Fox, right? Yeah, that was like the UFC fight nights. Yeah, because I think what ended up happening was like people weren't buying the pay per views because like the fights would be like what like a minute, two minutes long because you know injury or a fool gets knocked out. So like it didn't make any sense. Well, it made sense for them to move away from that. But uh, yeah, uh, for the main card, it's uh, Covington versus Mazda Mazda Mazda. Damn it. I said it earlier. Ah, I Just said it. In it. Pre what is it? Go. go, go Ma Masvidal. No, it's Masvidal. There we go. Yeah, Masvidal. Covington versus Masvidal. Uh, Covington's coming into this fight with a 16-3 record. Uh, Masvidal, 35-15. and 15. Uh, 
I believe Covington did lose his last. I was going to say fight. I don't know. Can you see that for <laughs> for boxing? I mean, for UFC. Yeah, he lost his last fight. Yeah, you say that. What was that guy? Urbanus. I I'm looking. I'm looking it up. Yo, yeah, he lost to Kamar Kamura Kamara Usman. Usman. Yeah, and a decision by decision. And Masvidal, uh, was his last fight against that one fool where he kicked him in the head, or was that a different fight? I don't remember who Masvidal fought in his last fight. Oh, I just know that this one is going to be good. He Masvidal was scheduled to fight Leon Edwards, but that was canceled in December last year. Uh, I'm trying to see because uh, who who is the guy that he knocked out with his leg? Do you know what I'm talking about? Don't not off me, the top of my don't, head. Don't leave me with no audio, sir. Uh, not off the top of my head. I wish I I followed UFC religiously to that point where I could just off the top of my head pull up any knockout, any submission, but mm-hmm. I'm not to that level yet. Oh, it was against Ben Askren. It was a running knee strike in the beginning, literally in two seconds. You know what I'm talking about, right? Though, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember I was at my I was at my friend's house and I was like, "Is this gonna be a good fight?" He's like, "Yeah." The bell rings or whatever. Askren goes for a, a leg takedown, and Mazdaval just kicks him in the crown of his head, knocks him out like a fish. Dude, I remember his celebration. He jumps up into the air like a dead fish and crashes down like. <laughs> Savage, absolutely dude, savage. That was savage, bro. Like, dude, you can't like write the scripts. But uh, yeah, for this weekend, uh, it's a welterweight fight between Miles Duval and Covington. Uh, to co, they're the main event. Uh, the co-main is a, a catch, catch weight. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it's between uh, Rafael dos Anjos and host, and host, and going up against Renato. Man, Moy Moicano, Moicano, yeah. Uh, Anjos is 30, 30 and 13, and Moicano is 16, 4 and 1. Uh, there are other fights on here. You have Spivak versus Hardy for the heavyweight division. Uh, Walter Vey, you got Kevin Holland versus Alex Oliveira. <laughs> I don't know if you can help me out there, Jeremy. That's probably Oliveira, Ol- Oliveria, no, Oliveira, yeah. Um, you in the other in the felterweight fight, you get Edson Barboza versus Bryce Mitchell, and yeah, that's the UFC 272 card. For I guess you could say the the main card of the. Of yeah, that's the main. Yeah, that's the main card because the prelims are a whole nother list. But no, yeah, we're not focusing on them. Oh yeah, no, we're not. But uh, I mean, do you have any anything to say upon the UFC here, sir? I just think uh, that headline fight between Covington and Masvidal is going to be really good. I mean, these are former friends and training partners. And yeah. They're going to they're going to be squaring off. There there's some blood if you've been seeing the press conferences yeah. between them. I had read that Covington punched one of like Masvidal's like trainers who he saw like as like a second father. So <laughs> there's there's pretty bad that's, blood. That's they're where the it, falling out co- stems from as well. They're itching to get in the in the octagon, man. Uh, I personally, I think Covington is one of the best fighters in the sport today, regardless of whether he's holding a championship belt or not. I mean, this is a guy who who's fought competitively against Kamaru Usman mm-hmm. multiple occasions. You know, that's who I view as the pound for pound king in UFC, and Covington has gone you know toe to toe with him. So that he has a rare ability, you know, and I, if I had to pick one, I think Covington is probably going to win by decision uh, in the fight, but it's going to be extremely entertaining to say the least. Ah, you can catch me watching it Saturday night for sure. Oh, well, I was wrong. So apparently Usman and Masvidal have fought twice. Uh, Usman, I believe the one went by decision. That's the one I'm talking about. And then uh, Usman won the second one by knockout slash TKO. And the second round. Hello? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. But oh, um, don't, don't give me no dead audio, man. It's not, not, not how waiting. podcast works. You I was be, waiting for you to be done. We could talk. Well, we could talk. We just go back and forth. That's all. It'll be. It's, it's just a little awkward for like two seconds. Yeah, that's all. You you were going back. I was waiting to go forth. Uh, Mazdaval, Mazdaval's last win was against Nate Diaz, by the way. It was by knockout in the third round. 
when was did it say when that was was that when it was, was recent 2019 oh never mind i didn't get to see that fight then yeah the one i saw was where did it go i just saw it ben Askren was yeah also 2019 but yeah uh he was gonna have that other fight but it got canceled and now we're here where he's gonna fight covington so yeah <laughs> it should be a good fight i think really good like really i said I, I don't follow a lot of ufc jeremy I mean, Jeremy, I mean, is there anything you could tell us about the UFC that you like, you know? I just find it way more entertaining than boxing. I, I used to be a boxing fan, and I started realizing that the sport was a lot more, there was a lot more uh, draws just so that there could be, a, or like there were split decisions just so that there could be another fight just to make more money. It just, I, I like the action that comes with UFC. It's, you, you definitely see more submissions, more knockouts. You see guys taking more risk when it comes to, you know, going, going for a punch or going for a kick. So it, it's oh, overall, it's a really good balance of martial arts. It's what makes it fun to watch. So I know a lot of people can probably say, like, you know, my favorite fighter, like my favorite person to watch was Conor McGregor. And I, don't get me wrong, he was electrifying when he was in the octagon, but you got to give some of these other guys uh, a good look because you'll, you'll find that there's a lot of entertaining people in the UFC now. Fun to watch. If I mean, if you have a chance, check out the fight this weekend. That The whole card is fairly good, I would say. that The main event is, I would say, extremely entertaining, and it's going to be... And they pretty, have beef. They have real beef. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to make it really good and juicy. It's going to be... Mazdaval even said, I'm not letting any of this shit go even after the fight. He's talking about my kids and everything. They, they, they got personal. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're, they're in each other's faces. So a couple days, just a couple more days until we get to see him fight. Let him duke it out. And then who knows? Maybe there'll be a rematch if they're both calling for it. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, just to go over the, I guess, the, the, the tail of the tape as well. Uh, Covington is 34, Mazaval is 37. Height, uh, Covington 5'9, or they're both 5'9, both coming at 170. And the reach, uh, Covington is coming with 72 inches, and Mazaval is at 74. So they're both evenly matched, in my opinion. So we're, yeah, we should be in for a good fight. And just let everybody know this is on pay per view, <laughs> not on Channel 11 or Fox, is, wherever you're yeah. watching. If uh, you have ESPN Plus, I think it's like sixty four ninety nine. So, otherwise, pay per view is like I think a hundred bucks. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, is there is there anything you would like to add upon uh, this UFC card? No, I think we covered everything. It should be good. Like I said, I'm really looking forward to the fight. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm gonna pick Covington to win. I know. I think the Vegas odds have him as the favorite, but uh, I think. Uh, I don't think Vegas is going to be wrong on this one. Yeah, same. I, as long as Mazaval comes out with aggression, uh, you know, he should have it in the bag, hopefully. Even if it goes to the decision. Do you think Mazvidal is going to win? Yes. Hmm. I mean, he is coming off an off because I don't know who and because I don't know who the other guy is. Okay. Well, I, Ma, Masvidal's coming off a knockout loss, so he's probably going to want to redeem himself. And because I saw him knock out a guy with one leg, so. <laughs> It there was somewhat of a lucky shot, but it was pre-planned due to the fact of him saying, I've seen him do a leg takedown every couple of other fights. So what were the odds that he, if he did it, I was going to strike him in the head? So that's, would you just, call it, that's just smart. That's smart. Would you still call it luck then? Or would you say that's well, somewhat? He, what if he missed? But the fact that he studied to know all of that, do you, would you consider that luck? I don't think I would. No, that's that not would. luck. But yeah. the fact that that one knee strike all is all it took. Yeah, because he wanted to fight more. He's like, dude, I wanted to beat the shit out of him. I mean, you did with one hit. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. It is, yeah. It was, that's just how it goes. It's how the bells rung. Yeah, exactly. No pun intended. <laughs> dude, he rung his bell. Sure did. But uh, yeah, uh, if, if we're done with that, are you ready to, to start running in the rundown? Let's go. I'm ready. I got my running shoes on. All right, for sure. I hope you got them. Air Pegasus. Uh, though, just to go over some old stuff real quick. The Winter Olympics finally wrapped up. Uh, you at Team USA finished a respectable 
fourth place overall in the medal count. Uh, in first place, I believe I'm trying to pull it up right here. Uh, it was Norway that finished in first, first, first overall. Um, they had a total of what's going on, thirty seven medals. Uh, second place was Germany was twenty seven. The Republic of China was fifteen, and the U.S. came in with fourth with. Wait, what? This can't be right. 25. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I think they're doing it. Oh, yeah, they're doing it based off of gold medals. Okay, I see what they're doing here. But uh, yeah, uh, the U.S. had uh, eight golds, 10 silvers, and seven bronze. Uh, Norway, who finished in first, had 16 golds, eight silvers, and 13 bronzes. Uh, Germany also had 12 golds. Uh, Ger uh, Jeremy, were you able to watch uh, the Winter Olympics by any chance? Unfortunately, not this time around. Oh, sad. But I did hear I did hear about Sean White though. Um, I mean, I cried, bro. Yeah, everybody knows uh, Sean White. You know, he's one of the greatest to ever do it. You know, when it comes to snowboarding. And so I did hear about him. That made me a little sad. And uh, you know, much respect to him for what he did for Team USA. Yeah, I know it's great, dude. I, dude, I watched him. At the X Games one time. One time. Won the gold. Shit was dope. But yeah. Um, Winter Olympics finally wrapped up. So yeah. <laughs> That's your Olympic news that we didn't get to last week. Uh, another thing we didn't get to last week that was jumping around. Uh, Aaron Rodgers posting very cryptic uh, photos and tweets on Insta on Twitter. Talking about, oh yeah, I love playing with this guy. And I appreciated him and his time here. As if he is saying he's retiring, but he hasn't said that yet. And uh, right now, the NFL Combine is going on. And uh, I know, Jeremy, we know we're, we're talking in, uh, prior to the show that, you know, this is where whispers start going around. And uh, the Packers GM has said that there had been no trade offers and we're not trading him around. So no one knows what's going on. Uh, Rogers already got interviewed on the Pat McAfee show where he didn't really say he was retiring. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, he's saying it's an option. <laughs> what do you think about this it's like he has the red light and green light on at the same time like he's it's we do is he going to retire is he not is he going to resign with the packers is he not is he going to want to request a trade to a team that he approves i don't know who knows no one knows only rogers knows so we're gonna have to wait that out that's a that's a saga i mean he's I'm, such a zen guy but he plays into the media so much oh i hate it so much man i know he'll be like yeah you know, I don't got to go get. I don't. I don't got to play to the league's rules. I don't got to do this or that. It's like, bro, how are you gonna be a nice guy and be goofing around? It makes no sense. I don't know, but I think in the next coming week or two, we should see something, especially because free agency opens up. I believe it's March sixteenth in two weeks. Yeah. So, uh, we're definitely gonna start hearing things. Because that's, I, I like I said, the combine is where things, whispers are made. You know, teams are asking about, you know, informally asking each other about, like, who's available, who who's a possible trade option. So after the combine is over, after the weekend, that's when we'll really start to hear maybe some traction pick up on some rumors. So I think that'll be the time to kind of keep an eye out on everything. Speaking of the combine, I just saw a video of some guy. I don't know his name or anything, but yeah, I think he just jumped like 12 feet from a standing position. Yeah, we've seen some ridiculous, some crazy, yeah, some crazy athletic performances in the combine. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a couple more this weekend. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I used to watch the combine, but not anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, then moving on to some slightly more serious news. Uh, so unfortunately in Europe, uh, Russia and Ukraine are in, com in, in combat and war. Uh, Russia has began to uh, invade parts of Ukraine. Uh, and with that, it does uh, impact some sports events, uh, sporting world events, I should say. Uh, FIFA and UEFA uh, have said... Uh, Many of the Russian teams and or clubs and national teams uh, are, are basically getting banned, right? Is that what's happening? Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Yeah, so uh, the Russian teams that are like, in European competitions are being kicked out. 
And then we've seen players leave the Russian league. We've seen coaches, you know, step away because they don't agree with the war. Uh, I mean, we've, we've seen, I mean, even Chelsea's owner, uh, Abramovich, who's Russian billionaire, he just came out and said that he wants to sell the team. Because yeah, of, of every because of everything going on, he he feels like it's in his, his best interest to sell the team, so that he can go and, you know, try to make everything right. Because he's the one who's leading the peace talks between Russia and Ukraine, which I think is crazy. You know, it, it's big move from him. He said it was in, incredibly difficult, but that's just it, it. Just goes to show you how far and wide this uh, ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine really really reaches. It, yeah, going all sports all, everywhere. It's it's touching all corners of the earth. Everybody's kind of keeping their eye on this. So. I also saw uh, national teams for soccer or for FIFA also come out like Team USA and Canada already say, "Hey, we're not playing Can Russia anytime soon." I also saw other uh, nations across the world also say the same thing. But uh, yeah, hey man, crazy times we're living in, huh? Wild wild as if a pandemic wasn't enough now we have this whole thing going on so it's just a matter of what's next i mean fingers crossed nothing terrible but hopefully you know um you know everything pans out good for everybody and everyone stays safe so yeah that's all we have to say about that just to give you that tip of news there okay everybody deal deal uh moving on to a little another combat sport uh all right, I'm going to try to say his name. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, come on. Gennady Golovkin. There you go. I said it. <laughs> Gennady yeah, Golovkin. Gennady and, Golovkin. Uh, Ray, I can't say this other his name. Ray, Ray, Rayuta Maranta are going to be in a middleweight title unification match set for April 9th in Saitama, Japan on The Zone. And this is an important fight because if Triple G wins and canela alvarez defeats dimitri is that is how you say it dimitri dimitri bivol bivol on may 7th they'll meet in a trilogy bout for the undisputed super middleweight title on september 17th bro what the hell like that first part is like all right whatever but that second part was out was canelo bro that's lit can you imagine the 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 final fight to the trilogy like that? This is gonna be must watch. I was already gonna watch Canelo's fight on May seventh, but if they happen to get a rematch of Golovkin and uh, Canelo, wow, just wow, that's gonna be huge for boxing. Because what the first fight ended in split decision, and then Canelo won the second one, right? I could have sworn uh, Triple G won the fight. I. I could have sworn Canelo won the fight because I think Canelo's only lost once. <laughs> Let's look that up. This is why we have the internet. I could have sworn because I think he's only lost to Mayweather. You know, the guy that runs around the ring and gets you tired, you know, strategically. <laughs> oh, that guy? Oh, yeah, that guy. That's right. But, yeah, I, I could have sworn he's, like, hey, he's undefeated. Oh, currently undefeated, but he's only lost that one bout. Am I right or am I right? I believe you might be right. I hope well, I'm right. So I thought I found it, but this just talks about how the first one was a split decision. So. Yeah, it was a split decision. The first one, yeah, but the second one is what I'm trying to look for. He has 59 bouts. He's won 56. Of Canelo is 56, 2, and 1. Oh, yeah, so the second one, yeah, you're right. Uh, he, he won by majority decision, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, his two draws coming from facing Triple G and George Juarez in 2006. That was a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, I think the, the one loss was to uh, Mayweather. Mayweather. Oh, too bad he's never going to get that fight again. Oh, well. You, you never know. I doubt it. How old is Mayweather now? Mayweather doesn't want to risk his perfect record. Not unless he, he has the opportunity to win, like a guaranteed win. He's going to wait until Canelo like, gets to his age and try to pull a fast one. Uh, even then, I don't think so. Yeah, probably not. Well, he's going to be a little bit older. 
But uh, yeah, um, I know my friend Danny Tan, one of my other co-hosts that hops on here every once in a while, is probably going to be looking up this fight. So I'm going to ask his opinion and see if we can get him to talk on the socials about it. But yeah, it sounds like all good times. I'm hoping for that Canelo um, Usyk fight that I've been hearing around. So what up? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No, I haven't. What's up with that? Well, I want to see... Because didn't Canelo like gain a lot of weight to be in the heavyweight division or something, right? Am I saying, am I talking correctly? I believe so. I mean, it, yeah, he has been putting on weight to go up a weight class. I don't know if it's to the heavyweight class, but I, I know he it's he's been bulking up. Cause who was Canelo's last fight? That was against, um, I think he was Billy from... something. <laughs> am I mixing it up with somebody? Billy else? Joe. I was thinking but, of someone totally different. So. Some guy named Billy Joe. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'd be down to see that Triple G Canelo fight. I feel like that was the only time I was ever, like, invested in, like, boxing. Because, like, there was no, like... Because Triple G was on a tear at that time. Like, was, like 2017. That, that man is unbelievable. So I guess he could say he's making a comeback. Never know. Could be. We I mean, never know. Oh yeah, he fought Caleb Plant too. That that's what I was gonna say. Caleb Plant. That was the last one that that just happened. Yeah. Okay. That was that's the last. Like, but I yeah, it was Bill, yeah. Right before that was the the Billy Joe one. Oh, Billy Joe Saunders. So good on him because yeah, I want to see that Usyk fight. I did see because they might be able to unify those belts as well. <laughs> Yo, Canelo going to be running around with all the belts. At this point, yeah, he's going to have every belt ever made. And no one's going to challenge him. Okay, he's going to just have to give him up. One by one. He'll probably be going away. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's everything I have here. Is there any other small tidbit of sports news you would like to point out? I don't know if we've mentioned this, but go check out the MLS. Oh, yeah, there is the MLS season. Uh, we just did a podium show on it. So, yeah, go check out that episode. Go check that one out and then come back to this one if you. <laughs> no, just kidding. You already got to the end. <laughs> Imagine. Gotcha. You're in the trap. Ooh, listen to this trapped. whole episode again. Yeah, listen to it again and then again and then again. And then again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, if that's everything, we can start wrapping it up, no? That is it. All right. Once again. Um, yeah, thank you for listening to the Rambling Runoff. Uh, if you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you think we're doing a good job or if there's anything we can fix on the show. Um, if you're on Spotify, thank you. I just saw Spotify. You could leave ratings on your favorite podcast. So give us a five-star rating, please. <laughs> uh, Apple just Podcasts. Added that. Yeah, just added that. Apple Podcasts, uh, Anchor, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. We're on all those. We're on all those. Um, if you want to hear more from us, you can find us on Twitter at Off Rambling. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Rambling Runoff. We also do have a TikTok now. You can just find us at Rambling Runoff. Uh, yeah, that's our show. We'll see you next week. Uh, this, I'm your host, Robert Rios. Oh, actually, no. Hold on. Jeremy, where can they find you on the socials? Oh, so if you guys want to talk sports, chop it up, you know, just see what it is I have to say on sports, you can go ahead and find me on Twitter. That is at Jagon underscore sports. Yes, yes. And if you want to find me on Twitter, you can find me at Robert RRY. Okay, now we're done. I'm your host, Robert Reels. For Jeremy Gonzalez, thank you for joining me today. See you guys next time. Peace out.